Somebody needs you right now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me. You too, Leandria. What's up, young people? It's your boy, Minister Simon, and I'm back again with another exciting episode of Empowered to Achieve Kids Corner. Listen, I need you guys to grab your pen, grab your paper, grab your highlighters, grab your Bibles, and get settled because it's time to dig into today's lesson. Let's go! Before we can begin today's lesson, we have to take a moment and do a quick recap over what we learned last week. Last week, we started our new series entitled the I am series. It's the I am series. The I am series. All right. So do you all remember what I told you all that we are last week? Does anybody remember? That's right. We are loved and we are chosen. We started our lesson last week with definitions like we always do, right? I told you guys that the meaning of love means to enjoy something greatly. And the meaning of chosen means to be selected as best and most appropriate. So we took those two definitions and we applied them to the word of God. We found ourselves in Ephesians chapter one, verses four and seven, four through seven, excuse me. And in those scripture, it tells us that even before the world began, God loved us and he chose us. Remember, I told you guys last week that everything about who you are in 2020 is exactly who God wanted you to be. Before God could put the stars in the sky, before he could put the trees in the ground, and before he could put the birds in the air, God chose to love you, and he chose you, and he chose me. So that means we live our lives every day knowing that there is at least one person who loves us and chooses us every day of our lives. And with us being loved and us being chosen, God enjoys spending time with us. He enjoys the way that we sing. He enjoys the way that we dance. He enjoys the way that we praise him and the way that we worship him. Not only that, but everything that we do, every gift that he's given us is perfect just for you and just for me. 
Listen, young people, that's our recap. I'm so excited to dig into today's lesson. We're going a little bit deeper in this I Am series. You guys ready? Today, we dig into part two of our I Am series. Today's lesson is, I am saved and I am brand new. Can you guys say that with me? I am saved and I am brand new. What are you? You're saved and you're brand new. Now, Minister Simon, what do you mean I'm saved and what do you mean I'm brand new? What does that even mean? Well, as you guys know, I got to give you guys what the dictionary says. So we're going to define two words today. We're going to define save or saved, and we're going to define the word new. Okay, so the word saved is defined as keep safe or rescue something or someone that someone being us from harm or danger. Let me read that again for you. Keep safe or rescue someone someone being you and I, from harm or danger. That means that it's God's responsibility and it's something that he's already done. He desires to keep us safe. He desires to rescue us from hurt, harm, and danger. Now, Minister Simon, I know I'm young, but is my life in danger? No, I don't want you guys living in fear thinking that your life is in danger. But there are some pretty scary things out there. And it takes like the one that we serve in order to keep us safe. So keep in mind, you are safe. You are saved, meaning that God is keeping you safe and that he is rescuing you and has rescued you from all harm and danger. Now, the word new is defined as already existing, but seen, experienced or acquired recently now for the first time. So in other words, when I say that we are brand new, it means that, yes, we already existed. Yes, we already had life. Yes, we're already 12 years old, 13 years old, which means we've already experienced 12 years or 13 years of life, right? But when you become new in Jesus, you become new in Christ, everything changes. Everything changes. And so it's almost as if we are presenting ourselves to the world for the very first time once we receive salvation. Now, Minister Simon, what do you, I know what the dictionary says, but can you take me to the Bible? Had you asked me that, of course I can take you to the word of God. The first scripture we're going to dig into today is Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine. That's Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine. When I turn, you turn just like that. Hey, when I turn, you turn just like that. When I turn, you turn, just like that. Hey, when I turn, you turn, just like that. All right, you guys should be in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. And as you guys know, I'm gonna be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Can I read that again for you guys? Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine. Verse eight says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Verse nine, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Now, Minister Simon, what does the scripture mean? I'm so glad you guys asked me that. Let's talk for a second. The first thing that we need to know is that God's favor saved us when we shifted our mind. So the scripture says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. That means when we made up in our mind that God is real, when we exercise our faith and truly begin to believe in God's existence and believe in his greatness and his, his magnificent power and his awesomeness, when we begin to believe in him, that's when he saves us. See, we have to make a conscious decision. That means we have to make up our mind every day that God is real. Why? Because as we go through life, there are going to be so many things that come our way. And if we're not sure in our foundation in God, if we're not standing firm in his, it will be very easy for us to be distracted. 
We might even set ourselves up to be harmed or be dangered. Because as the scripture said, God saved us by his grace. And his grace is his favor over our lives. Let's keep reading. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Which means we can't celebrate ourselves and, and being saved. We have to celebrate God because he decided to give us salvation. Salvation is not something we can work for. As the verse nine says, it's not a reward for the good things that we have done. That means that nothing we do will ever put us in position to say that we earned salvation. It's not something that we can work for. As you guys know, with your parents, they get up, they may go to work or they may be entrepreneurs, which means that they create their own opportunities to make money. And so they're working and, and, and they're working, they're getting something in return. And usually what they get in return is money, right? Well, that's not how it works with salvation. With salvation, we can't work to get it. We don't have to work to earn salvation. As the Bible says, it's a gift. There is nothing that we can brag about. When we say that we're saved, it's not us bragging on who we are, but it's bragging in the fact that we believe in a God who loves us enough to choose us every day, who loves us enough to save us. And then when we accept salvation into our life, we become new creatures. Whoa, Minister Simon, what do you mean new creatures? Well, I'm so glad you guys asked me. I want you guys to take out your Bibles, which should already be out, but I want you guys to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Once again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When I turn, you turn just like that. Hey, when I turn, you turn just like that. When I turn, you turn just like that. Hey, when I turn, you turn just like that. All right, young people, you should be in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want you to scroll down to the 17th verse. I love this particular verse because it's a constant reminder of exactly who I am in God. Now, there's so many scriptures that we can talk about and that we are going to talk about that tells us who I am. But this one, I love this one. Let me read it for you from the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Okay, Minister Simon, what in the world does that scripture mean? Let's take it step by step. So this means that who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Remember, I told you guys the definition of new is already existing and seen and experienced but recently had for the first time. Remember, I told you that when we're saved, that means that ourselves to the world for the first time. So as this scripture says, become new people. Yes, your name stays the same. Yes, some of your person stay the same. However, there are certain parts about who you are that changes when you are saved by God. Sometimes the words that we use change. The way that we think changes. The way that we behave changes. That's why the scripture says the old life is gone and a new life has begun. See, young people, there's going to be a point where you guys get so strong in your relationship with God that the way that you respond to certain um, circumstances or situations changes. You know, right now, we when we go back to March, when COVID-19 first happened, some of us were nervous. We were scared. We had some anxiety. We didn't know what was going to happen. But here we are now in November and God has blessed us through this entire process. So it's our relationship with God. It's our salvation in God and being safe in God that has helped us get to the month of November with no hurt, no harm, no danger, no destruction. We're not missing meals. We aren't going without anything. And it's all because we have been made new creatures in Christ. God has made us new. And so when he makes us new, 
like I said, our mindset changes and we begin to think a little bit differently. Young people, that's awesome. That's something great. That's what I love about being saved and being brand new. That every day that I wake up, I have an opportunity to be more like Christ. That's what it means when, when it says new life has begun. The old life of who I used to be has gone bye-bye, way bye-bye to who you used to be. And take a moment to embrace who God created you to be. Because who God created you to be is that new life that 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17 is talking about. Listen, that's our lesson. But as you guys know, I couldn't let you all go without writing a song and without giving you something to sing all week long. We have reached my favorite part of our lessons, and that is the song, the song, the song, the song. Okay, guys, so I did something a little different this week. I decided to find some instrumental music and write the song along with the music. I hope you guys like it. Here we go. I'm gonna cut it up. Can you guys hear it? Just snap, just snap. Here we go. If any man be in Christ Jesus, a new creature, new life has begun. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature, new life has begun. I'm saved and brand new. With you, O oh Lord, with you, O oh Lord, I'm saved and brand new. With you, O oh Lord, with you, O oh Lord, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature, new life has begun. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature, new life has begun. I'm saved and brand new with you, O oh Lord, with you, O oh Lord. I'm saved and brand new. With you, O oh Lord, with you, O oh Lord. All right, young people, that's our song, which means that's our lesson. I've had so much fun today teaching you all about being saved and about being brand new in God. Never forget just how much new life can come from being safe in God. You all have a great day. I'm Minister Simon. Thanks so much for tuning in to another exciting episode of Empowered to Achieve Kids Corner. And I'm out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to enter into prayer. Hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord this morning. And if you could, right where you are, hallelujah, just open up your mouth and begin to utter sweet words unto the master. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for who you are. God, you are king of kings, Lord of lords. You are our father. You are our friend. You're the one who covers us, the one who keeps us the one who delivered us, God. We thank you, Father, for who you are today. Great and awesome are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Wonderful counselor you are, Father. We take this time, God, just to, to acknowledge who you are this morning. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. And we thank you, Father God, that you empower us to do everything that we are able to do 
Father, we just take this time just to lift you up and to blow kisses unto you for your greatness and just for how awesome you are because there is nobody who compares to you, Father God. And we just take this opportunity, Lord, just to say that we love you and we thank you for just your greatness and thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercies which are new every morning. We take this time, God, just to acknowledge, Father God, that you are sovereign. You are the great God. You are the awesome God. You are the dreadful God. You are the jealous God. God, the one who wants us to, to um, only have our attention on you, to only worship you in spirit and in truth, God, because you are worthy of it. We take this time, God, to acknowledge your creation, Father God, that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, that nothing exists without you, Father. And we say thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to wake up this morning, God, just to, to blow kisses unto you, to acknowledge how sweet you are and how merciful you are, God. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you for another chance, Father God, just to come before you boldly. Come before your presence humbly. Come before your presence, God, in full surrender. In full, total surrender to your will and to your way. God, we open ourselves up to you right now. We open ourselves up to you right now, God. We make ourselves available to you right now, God. Do what you want to do in us. And Father God, we say thank you. Thank you for another chance to get it right with you, God. Another opportunity to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent for my wrongdoing. I'm sorry for the things I said that were against you. I'm sorry for the things I did that were against you, Father God. We ask even now, Lord, that you would forgive us. Forgive us of all our sins, all unrighteousness, all uncleanliness, God. Any thoughts that we thought that were not pleasing unto you, God, we ask even now in Jesus' name that you would forgive us for that. For the words we spoke that were against your word. We ask that you would forgive us for that. For the, the, the unloving spirit we might have had this week, God, we ask that you would forgive us for that in the name of Jesus. If we've harbored unforgiveness in our heart, if we were uh, stirring up a, a discord amongst the brethren, God, we ask that you would forgive us even now, God. You know, search our hearts and know us. And if there be any way in us that's not pleasing unto you, we ask that you would lead us into your everlasting way. Father God, we ask that you would just touch our hearts, Father. Give us a heart of flesh and not of stone. Even as we have entered into this series of aligning the heart, God, we ask even now that you, Father God, the great physician, would do heart surgery on each and every one of us. That you would go into each and every artery, God each and every chamber in the name of Jesus of our heart, God. And you do a, a great, a great work through your word, God, on us. But God, we know that we want to be pleasing in your sight. And we know that our heart has to be right in order to please you. So we ask even now in the name of Jesus that something that is said or done today, Father, will continue to align us, to posture ourselves humbly in full submission, hallelujah, to your will, to your way at your feet, God. We pray even now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would do a new thing in us as you promised in your word. And we shall know it and we shall perceive it, God. We thank you that we can already sense that you're moving. Hallelujah. We can already sense, God, that you're changing things for the better. We can already sense, God, that you are doing things according to your will and your way, God. We just ask that we would be in agreement to your will. That we would be in agreement in the name of Jesus. Not our will, but your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Not our will, but your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven, God. Not our will, but your will be done in your ministry, in your body, in your church, God. You do what you want to do. Have thine own way in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we just say thank you, Lord, just for your greatness and, and all the wonderful things that you are doing, God, in our lives individually, hallelujah, and collectively, Father. We thank you, Lord, that our uh, provisions are being made for your people, that you are granting us healing and deliverance and peace, hallelujah. You are allowing joy to be restored, hallelujah. You are restoring families, hallelujah. We thank you for all those things that you are doing, Father God. And we pray that today, Father, through your manservant, that the word of God that will come forth today will continue to help the, the pieces of our lives come together as you see fit, Father God. We pray for the word today that it will go forth boldly. We pray for the word today that, that it will go forth and, and that your convicting spirit, not condemnation, Lord, but conviction would be uh, um, evident in our lives, that we would be sensitive to your spirit, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. 
So we pray that the word that goes forth today, God, will go forth unhindered, unrestricted, that it will flow freely from our pastor's mouth, from his belly. God, we ask even now that you would touch him in a special way. Father God, that if there be any nervousness, God, or any doubt of what it is that you want to say, Father, that you would settle his spirit even now. God, we pray that the atmosphere, Father, will continue to be conducive for your Holy Spirit to have his way. God, your Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. So we pray right now that each and every atmosphere in our homes, God, on a job or in a car, wherever you may be, wherever the listeners are listening, God, we pray that the atmosphere would be conducive and subject to your spirit. Have your way, Lord God. Break up fallow ground even now in the name of Jesus. Let yokes be destroyed, destroyed by your anointing, God. Let your power fall, Father, that we can be delivered out of the things that have been holding us back and delivered into the things that you have promised us. For your promises are yes and amen, and you told us that you have a plan for us, and we believe you, God. So we pray even now that you would help every area of unbelief, even now. In the name of Jesus, if we've been grappling with a, 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 a something that you said in your word, if we've been struggling, God, to receive your promises, God, I pray that now in Jesus' name that there will be a settling in the hearts and minds of your people, that we will settle in you, that we will return to our first love and trust you all the more, that we will lean and depend on you and not to our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all our ways so that you can direct our path. God, we thank you, Lord, just for this service. We pray even now in Jesus' name, Lord, that deliverance and healings and miracles and signs and wonders, God, will take place in the lives of your people. You know our, our individual needs and concerns, and we lift those up to you right now, God. We pray for the lost today, the unsaved, God. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that there will be some divine encounter, some divine connection, Father God, on our jobs or in the school, God, or in our communities, at the, the grocery store, at the gas station, Father God, walking around our neighborhood. There will be a divine encounter, Father God, with the unsaved that we can minister salvation unto your people because you don't desire that we would be lost, God. And this is the reason why we come. We come to gather and get the seed of your word that we can go into the highways and byways and compel men to come. So God, I pray for now in Jesus' name that you would put a fresh anointing of evangelism on us, a fresh anointing of discipleship, that we would not walk around here just saying Jesus is mine, but we would share you to the world. That a dying world will ask, what must I do to be saved? So God, we thank you for souls coming unto you today. We thank you, Lord God, that someone is going to hear your word or going to hear a song or going to hear a word that is spoken, Father God, and be encouraged to leave their past behind. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. And we just pray for your manifested presence, God, in each and every one of our lives to continue to help us to walk this straight and narrow path, God. We need you, Lord. So have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in the midst of today as we go through this worship experience. God, we just want you to be lifted up. Be lifted high, God. Have your way in the midst of us. And we'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord God, because you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. So we say thank you right now, God. We thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. We thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to say. We thank you in advance for how you're going to move. We thank you, God, for how you're going to deliver, how you're going to set free. We thank you for how you're going to heal, God. We thank you for how you're going to loose the chains, God, from those who have been bound. We thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for how you're going to restore, renew, and revive. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you now, God. We thank you now, God. We give you glory now. We're not going to wait until it happens, but God, we're going to bless you right now because we believe, God, that you're going to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. We're going to exercise that power through our praise right now, God. We believe you. We believe that every prayer that we prayed all week long, every prayer that we're waiting to be answered, God, that you're going to step in, God, and you're going to move because you are are a very present help hallelujah you are the very present help and we thank you right now God for how you're getting ready to manifest your blessings and your promises to your people but God help us to be obedient help us to line our lives up like we should so that you don't have to hold back the things that you desire to give us and we'll be careful God to give you praise honor glory 
majesty, dominion, and power is yours, God. We give you praise right now. Thank you, Father. In your son Jesus' name we pray. People of God, say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, just give God praise where you are. Let's just lift up holy hands unto the master. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. For another day that you have made. Another chance, God, to, to just worship you another opportunity God to praise you hallelujah thank you God hallelujah hallelujah glory to the lamb hallelujah we give you glory God we give you glory God hallelujah 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 glory 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 Lord hallelujah Glory, 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 glory. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody live up a sound. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Yes, we do, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord, hallelujah. For every way you made, every door you've opened, hallelujah. And God, just for who you are, Lord, we give you glory, Lord, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy, y'all, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he is great. He is awesome, he is mighty, hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We worship and adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship and adore you, Lord. Great and awesome are you, God. Hallelujah. Hey, nobody compares to you, Lord. Hey, nobody, nobody, nobody compares to you, Lord. Hallelujah. spirit and in truth, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Come on and enter in. Hi, oh, yeah, God. Hey, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh, God. Hey, God. Oh, God. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Hey. Oh, we adore you, Lord. We adore you. We adore you. Nobody before you, Lord. Nobody compares to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, God, hallelujah. He's so sweet, y'all, huh? Hey, he is so sweet, so merciful, so kind, so holy, so loving. You are God. Yes, you are. Hey, oh, God, and we take this time, God, hallelujah, to honor your holy name, Lord. Honor your holy name, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Woo, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of our King today. Hallelujah. Oh, God. There is peace in his presence. There is the fullness of joy in his presence. Hallelujah. Jesus, the fullness of joy is in his presence, hallelujah, if you want your joy, get into his presence, yeah, yeah, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I so cried yesterday, Lord. We say yes again, Jesus, hallelujah. Our soul says yes, Lord. Our mind 
says yes lord our heart says yes lord yes lord yes lord yes to your will yes to your way yeah 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 yes lord come on somebody tell god yes yes hey. yes lord yes lord we give you another yes lord yes lord <laughs> oh god we give you another yes another yes hey god Another yes to the assignment. Hallelujah. Another yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the spirit of worship is set. Hallelujah. And as we go forth and we continue, let's go to the word. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, the word of the Lord is coming from Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to your name, Jesus. Ezekiel 36. Hallelujah. Beginning at verse 26. Ezekiel 36. Beginning at verse 26. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord says, And I will give you a new heart. Hey, God. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. I'm going to read it again. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Hallelujah. Good morning, VCDC. Hallelujah. Family members and friends, we thank God for you joining us today in this online worship experience. We pray that the word of God will just bless you richly today. Hallelujah. That uh, you will be encouraged, that you will be lifted up, that, that there is whatever you need from God, that you will get it today as you continue to open up your hearts and your minds to our master today. We want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. Just just release, hallelujah, and let God have his way because his sweet spirit, hallelujah, is, is definitely among us. Hallelujah. We honor your name, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Somebody just chat in. Hallelujah. Come on, just chat in a lifted hand emoji. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We're going to move forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to move forward. And enter into praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word that tells us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty means freedom. Hallelujah. And so we just thank God for his spirit being amongst us today that gives us the right to be free worshipers. Hallelujah. So I invite you to just, hallelujah, lift up the name of the Lord with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Free. 
to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Said I'm free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Say I'm free to dance.
your chains holding me, my soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. Are you free today? Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord because he's worthy. Hallelujah. We give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for his love today. We thank him for his love. That even when we didn't deserve it, there was nothing that can separate us from the love of God.
you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing. Jesus, we worship you, yes. We give you glory, Lord, for your amazing. You're an amazing father. We love you, God. Yeah. Because of your love. Because of your love. Oh, Jesus, you love me. You're amazing. Oh, every little part of me is brand new because of your love. Worship him right here. Hallelujah. The word of God is about to come forth. And we thank God that he loved us enough to leave us a road map in our lives that we don't have to walk around confused. We don't have to walk around lost. Hallelujah. He loved us just that much to leave us his word. Hallelujah. We honor your name, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. He loves us. Amen. And because he loves us, we surrender all of what we have this morning unto our Savior. Amen. Good morning. Amen. It's so good to see all of you on live stream worshiping this morning. Amen. We are in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. And we're excited. We should be excited about honoring God because of who he is in our lives. Amen. Can we just take a moment right here just to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you that I didn't die last night. Thank you that I didn't die last uh, in my sleep. Thank you that I got up with, with some portion of health. Amen. I got up with some portion of my right mind. I'm alive and well, and we honor the Lord for him keeping us this morning. Amen. 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 So good morning to all of you again. It is so wonderful to see all of you worshiping with us. If you could do us a favor, if you could invite somebody in right now, right at this moment, I'm going to invite somebody in right here with you. Invite somebody into this live experience. Amen. To worship the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. Come, all of us, let's get together and fellowship the Lord. 
Amen. In spirit and in truth. Amen. I want all of you to bring your burdens. Amen. I want you to bring your cares. I want you to bring your joy, your peace. I want to bring, I want you to bring all of you this morning. I don't want you to just bring the spiritual side of you, but I want to bring, I want you to bring your flesh too to the altar. Amen. I want you to bring all of you, everything that you're carrying this morning, everything that you're dealing with, I want you to bring that amen with you this morning because God is going to do a work this morning. Amen. He's going to do something. He's going to say something through his word that's going to help us to be better. Amen. And I'm excited about this word. Amen. So I'm Terry in just a second so you can invite somebody else into this live stream. Amen. Share it on your page. Amen. There's a word that's coming from heaven. Amen. And it's guaranteed to bless your heart and to change your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite one more person. Amen. I'm here with you. I'm not just telling you to do it. I'm going to do it myself. Amen. You don't see somebody on it. Somebody ain't said something. Just invite him in anyway. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for our Lady Stearns. Amen. Leading us in worship this morning. Amen. She did an amazing job. Amen. We thank God for just her being diligent in her assignment. Amen. And her call. We thank God for all the elders and ministers of this ministry. Amen. Columbia and North Carolina. Amen. All of our partners, visitors, and friends, we thank God for you. We celebrate the name of the Lord with you. And so we're going to have a good time in the word. Amen. 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 So prepare your hearts. Amen. This is a Lining the Heart series. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you. Yes, Lord, we thank you this morning that we'll surrender all unto you. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. So, Father, we ask now that you would just move by your spirit today, Lord Jesus. Continue to breathe on us from glory. Continue to inhabit the praises of your people. Father, we thank you for breaking this bread of life this morning, God, that will feed multitudes. We thank you, God, this morning that as we release everything that we brought to the worship experience, Lord God, that hallelujah, that you will fill our cups, my God, hallelujah. Oh, God, that you would fill our cups till it overflows, oh, God. Oh, God, not with material things, but with your goodness and your mercy. High and glory to God. Oh, God, we bring everything at your feet this morning, and we say, God, we present our bodies as living sacrifices unto you, Lord God. And we say, get this, we say to you this morning, God, slaughter us, oh, God. Oh, God, slaughter the things that are not like you. In the name of Jesus, oh God, break every yoke, oh God, break every uh, uh, heart uh, thing uh, of depression and insecurity, break it up, oh God, destroy it at the root this morning, oh God, and we pray, Lord God, we present everything to you. We don't just present our good ways, but we present the things that we're dealing with, oh God, and we present our mind on the altar this morning, and we present our heart on the altar this morning, Lord God, and God, we say do surgery on us today. Hallelujah. Do surgery on us right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, by way of your spirit and by way of your word. Oh, God, we love you today, God. And we want to, we want you to create a clean heart and renew a right spirit down on the inside of us. Oh, God, we ask, Lord God, that you would break up every fallow ground. Break every chain off of every person that is watching and those that will come in after. Oh, God, let your spirit, oh, God, surround us in this place and wherever we may be. Oh, God, let your spirit do the work, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh God, we praise you for what you're going to do. And God, we honor you for what you're about ready to, about getting ready to do. And God, we celebrate you for doing a great work on the inside of us, oh God. Oh God, we've dressed it up, oh God. But God, we want you to deal with the inside. Oh, hallelujah. Deal with the inside of what we're dealing with, oh God. Oh God, that it may reflect your glory of the change on the outside. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we need you this morning. We need you like the air that we breathe. We need you like like the song that we sing. Oh God, we need you, God. Oh God, we're calling on your name, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, our way over and our way through. Huh? Oh God, the God of times past and the God to yesterday, today, and forevermore. We call on Jesus, our breadwinner. Oh God, our heaven provider. Oh God, our door opener, our window heister. We call on Jesus today. Huh? Oh, no other help that I know but the name of Jesus and we call on Jesus this morning Lord God and say have your way have your way on the inside of us and we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory and we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory and we'll give you praise and we will give you glory 
and the people of God who are victorious, if you believe that God is getting ready to do something for you right now in this moment, I just triple dog dare you to shout amen like you already got the victory. I dare you to open your mouth right here and tell the Lord, thank you for feeding me right now. I dare you to open your mouth and say, Lord, whatever you're going to do, I accept your will. My God, whatever you will say today, I accept your word. Oh, God, because your word is right by itself. Whatever you want to do, Lord God, I'll be uh, in agreement. I'll say amen. I'll be in agreement and I'll say amen and amen and amen. If you would just believe that, amen, and shout with victory and say, I believe what God is going to do for me is going to be victorious. I believe what God is going to say to me is going to be life changing. I believe what God is going to equip me with is going to do something that I never expected it to do. I'm walking in expectation. I'm coming in an alignment. I'm coming in an agreement with the will of my Savior. Depression can't have me. Debt can't have me. Insecurity got the looser chains off of me. Oh God, but whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I want to declare today that today is freedom day. Hallelujah. That today is victorious day. Today is freedom day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is freedom day. Oh, glory to God. Today is freedom day. Today is the day of victorious. Hallelujah. Living victoriously because I am a victor. I am victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 If I had a church full of people, I would say you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Some of y'all probably already seated. Amen. Amen. And I hope by the end of this service, you would stand up and just give God a praise. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us need to be walking in our houses and travailing and clapping and singing praises unto the Lord. Amen. And letting the enemy know you ain't got no authority. You don't have no place here. Hallelujah. Not even my mind, not in my heart, not even in my home. Praise the name of God. Amen. 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 We're going to be coming from the word of Ezekiel this morning, the book of Ezekiel. Amen. That is where we're coming from this morning. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36. Amen. And first lady read 26 through verses 27. Amen. She read that. Amen. And she read it with boldness and with conviction. Amen. And we thank God for that. Amen. Ezekiel 36 is where we're coming from. Amen. And 26 to 27. And I'll read it. Amen. From the New Living Translation. Ezekiel 36, 26, through verse 27, and it says, and I will, y'all should have shouted right there because that's a promise. He said, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart heart. My God, that just read differently me, right, to me right there. That read differently me, to me right there. Uh, I will give you a tender, responsive heart. And verse 27 says, and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulation. Amen. This I have read Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. The Lord made out a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his holy word. God is blessed. Break it, multiply it, and get it. Give it to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we are moving in the second week of Aligning the Heart series, last week we talked about lip service and what it means to have a lip service. Amen. And what it means that, you know, the Bible was talking from the book of Matthew about Jesus referring to uh, the Pharisees that, their lips are close to him, but their heart is far away from him. That's a, a paraphrase uh, statement that I just said there. But the, the lips are honoring him, you know, but the heart is far from him. And we dealt with that last week, lip service. And we don't need to just give God a lip service, but we need to give him a heart service. Our lips should sign up. Sign, Align, amen, with our heart, amen. Our lips should be in sync with our heart, amen. Our lips 
should be on the same page as our heart and not our lips be on one thing and our heart be on another thing. We can't say we love God. Amen. Help us in here, Holy Spirit, and not obey his commandments. If we say it, we have to do it. And if we do it, that means our heart should be into it. Amen. And so we talked about lip service on last week. Amen. And so this week I want to share with you, amen, the sermon topic entitled heart transplant. Subtitle change, changing the stony heart, heart transplant, changing the stony heart. Uh, first lady, I, as she was praying this morning, she does not know what I'm speaking on. Amen. Uh, she has the privilege to lay next to me and, and, and get some, uh, some of the oil before it comes out. Amen. But I did not share anything with her this morning about what the Lord was saying through his word. And she, as she was praying, she talked about God uh, literally given us a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. That was in her prayer this morning. She also prayed about the arteries, amen, being changed, the heart being changed, amen. And so she was right in sync with what uh, the Lord had been giving me about a heart transplant, amen, changing the stony heart. When we're talking about aligning, once again, uh, for your hearing, when we talk about alignment, we're talking about getting into a straight line. We're talking about coming in an agreement with the plan and the will of the Father, our Savior. We're talking about that when we realize that we are, have been out of alignment, that way we can get back in alignment. You cannot get in a line if you don't first recognize and articulate that you have some way, form and fashion, been out of alignment. And so this is our year of alignment. And so we want to align everything. Amen. Before we close out the year 2020. Amen. Uh, the pandemic has caused some of us to get in alignment in some areas. Amen. Uh, some areas of, of storing up if you will, or getting the house together. Amen. We dealt with that last month, but uh, uh, I want to encourage you that even on this month of November, that the Lord is encouraging us to get our heart in a line with his heart. Uh, the Lord is encouraging us as a people to get our will back into his will. Amen. And to get our posture of what we do for him back to the heart of what we do for him. Amen. And, and it, it, we cannot accept anything from us if it is not coming from the heart. Uh, I'm just kind of going back and forth a little bit, but if we have lip service, God would not accept lip service. He must accept what is coming from the fruit of your hearts out of the depths of your lips. Amen. And so when we are aligning our heart, we must understand that some way, Elder Kelly, our heart has been out of sync with the Lord's heart. And because it has been out of sync, that means it's been out of rhythm. And because it's been out of rhythm, that means it's been out of alignment. And because it's been out of alignment, we must get our heart back in alignment with God's heart. Amen. And we must understand that when our hearts are out of sync with God, we must figure out what is causing our hearts to not be sync with our Savior. Uh, some of it can be uh, the, the, the cares of this world. Some of it can be the fact that you lost someone. Some of it can be tra traumatic, traumatic experiences. Some of it can be that somebody broke your heart and you became bitter and you got unforgiveness uh, uh, and somebody rejected you and now you're dealing with abandonment and that thing has taken root down in your heart and so now you got lip service instead of a heart service and, and it's not because God has done anything to you, uh, it's because we have allowed people to take the place of God. We have allowed situations in our life to arise and take the place of God but I've come to encourage somebody today that God is getting ready to change your heart God is getting ready to give you a heart transplant and he's getting ready to change your stony heart, amen, to a heart that is going to be repentant, revived, it's going to be revived and it's going to be brand new. I want to encourage you this morning with past ain't nothing wrong with my heart. See, that's the problem right there. If you say nothing wrong with your heart and you think you're perfect, you need a heart transplant because if we remain low at the foot of Jesus, uh, we won't get so big and say, well, I don't need no work. Yes, all of us are a work in progress if we be honest and we don't not every eye and we don't cross every T and so every day of our life we need God to revive our heart consistently why we need him to do it consistently every day ladies turns because we're made of flesh and bone and we'll slip back into our old ways and we'll slip back into our old desires and we'll slip and cut somebody out we need to get our heart transplant and we need to say God create a clean heart in me and renew a right spirit not just on Sunday but every day of my life 
life. We need God to change our hearts. So when we look at this, we must understand in order for us to get our heart back in line with God, we must understand that it first has been out of sync with God. I'm going to deal with the book of Ezekiel just for a second in a minute, but I want to give this to you simply because even when we look at the text, the Bible is declaring that Israel, the chosen people, the chosen people of God has been out of sync with the heart of God. And I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but we are already talking about being in sync with God. And so when we look at what it means to be in sync with God, we must first understand that in order for us to be in sync with God, we must first understand how or why we are out of sync with God. And that is a personal inventory that we must do. We must take a personal inventory if our heart is in line with God. God. Uh, the scripture declares that if you love me, then you will obey me. And if we love him, then we will obey his commandments. And that's a tip right there for you, that if you are not obeying God in some area, then maybe your heart is, in not, is not in sync with God. When we look at the autonomy of the heart, we find that the heart should have a steady syncopated rhythm. The heart should have a steady syncopated rhythm. When we understand that the heart has a syncopated rhythm, we understand that it is beating as it should. When I looked up the word syncopation or what syncopated mean, the word syncopated means that the beats that are louder would decrease to let the lower beats come into match with it. In other words, there, there's a rhythm or there's a, there's a rhythm that one beat is louder than the other. And when you are in syncopation, the loud beat would diminish its sound uh, and come to the level of the weaker beat, and now they're on the same page. And when I begin to look at that definition, I begin to hear God say that some beats of your heart is not on the same page with mine. Uh, some rhythm that you got, you're moving a little too fast for me, and I'm not moving at that pace, and you are a uh, farther ahead of me than I need you to be. And some of us are so, a little farther behind God where we should be. My God, if 2020 has not taught us anything, it has taught us not to be ahead of God and not to be behind God, but to be in syncopation with God. It has taught us to be in alignment with God. See, when you are in syncopation with God, you are automatically in alignment with God. And what does that mean? That means that God lets your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It means that God, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. If you don't want me to go there, I won't go there. If you don't want me to say this, I won't say that. If you don't want me to do this, I won't do this. If you want me to forgive, I'll forgive. And if we are being disobedient in any area of our lives that God has already told us that we need to come in line with, we are not in syncopation with God. God. Look at somebody in your house and say, God is getting ready to change my rhythm. God is getting ready to change my beat. God is getting ready to change my rhythm and he's getting ready to align me back with his lineman. He's getting ready to align me back in the place of where he wants me to be and where he wants me to go and how he wants me to do it and when he wants me to say it. The timing of God is perfect and a lot of us, if we be honest, we have been out of the will of God and God is simply saying saying today that I am going to give you a heart transplant. I am going to change your heart. And not only will I change your heart, my God, but I'm going to change your mind. And my God in here, and not only am I going to change your mind, Dominique, but I'm going to give you a fresh revelation. I'm going to give you a new revelation. Because a lot of us thinking we're walking in the assignment of God. And God is simply saying, you're walking in your own will, and you got your own revelation. But I want to give you a new heart. And I want to give you the heart that beats with mine. I want to give you the first heart that I gave you back in Genesis when I created Adam. I want to take you back to that place where it was just me and you. I want to take you back to the place where we first fell in love together and we were googling eye with one another and we were smitten with one another. I want to take you back to that place where I laid you down and built you from nothing and put my breath in your breath and my heart on your heart and my faith in your faith. Oh my God in here. God is is going to align us back together and he's just not talking to you personally but he's talking to the church he's talking to Israel he's talking to the chosen generation he's talking to the people that will obey him and if you love him you will obey somebody say change my heart God 
change my heart. The way I look at people change my heart. I could be so critical and I could be so judgmental. Oh God, but change my heart. I could be so critical about how people worship, but change my heart. I could be so critical how people live, but change my heart. Oh God, in here, if I could take a second and remember where I was, it would put me in a posture not to be so critical. It would put me in a posture not to be so judgmental, but God create a clean heart in me and renew a right spirit. Somebody shout, change my heart. Change my heart. I need you to change my heart. He's talking to the body of believers. Uh, and so when we realize that the autonomy of the heart, the heart should, hallelujah, have a steady syncopation or syncopated rhythm with God's heart. Uh, when we realize, Sister uh, uh, Serena, when we realize that our heart is not in syncopation, uh, it could cause, watch this, improper beating of the heart. When we uh, find that our heart is not in syncopation with God, I have to come out this cold in a minute. Oh God, we can. It could cause improper beating of the heart. I'm gonna say it again. When your heart is not on the same page with God, and when your heart is not in the same rhythm with God, it could cause improper beating of the heart. And when you have a heart that beats improperly, your heart is doing. Three things, it's either beating irregularly uh, or it's beating slow or it's beating fast. And I just told you about that. Your heart is doing three things. It's either beating fast or it's beating too slow or it is out of syncopation with God. It is irregular. And when we deal with irregular heartbeats, irregular heartbeats can be a result of a weak heart. Oh, my God in here. And as I begin to study that thing, oh, God in here, irregular heart beats are a result of a weak heart oh my God and when you are not beating on the same page with God and when you're not in line with God's heart you are coming from a weak place hallelujah you're coming from a weak heart but I want to stop here for a second because a weak heart is not necessarily a bad thing uh, when you are weak that's when he is strong oh my God but when you're weak talking about that you don't have no self control and you ain't got no discipline discipline about yourself. You are in danger of not being in the will of God. And so when we look at this, irregular heartbeats can result, is a result of a weak heart. And I'm going to pause right here because I want to deal with the weak heart just for a little while longer. Oh, when I looked at what irregular heartbeats mean and how it affects our body, I wanted to take a second and let you know that when you have irregular heartbeats, uh, it's a result of a weak heart. And when you have irregular heartbeats, uh, you are now potentially walking into state of cardiac ar uh, arrhythmi arrhythmia. Uh, when you are walking in cardiac arrhythmia, it occurs when electrical impulses in your heart don't work properly. The stuff that stimulates your heart, the stuff that makes your heart beat properly. Uh, and when you are walking in cardiac arrhythmia, it occurs when the electrical impulses in your heart don't work properly. In other words, you ain't got no energy to stabilize your heartbeat. You ain't got no uh, uh, no rhythm to stabilize your heartbeat. And when this happens, this is known as a cardiac arrhythm, and it occurs when your heart isn't working properly. My God, and God wanted me to share with the body, hallelujah, that all oh, by the end of this text, your heart is going to beat in sync with God. Your heart is going to come back into alignment with God. But first we must deal with the irregular heartbeats. First, we must deal with the inconsistency of what you've been doing. First, we must deal with the inconsistency of the way you've been thinking. The Bible declares, so is a man thinking, so is he. Oh, God, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, and that is to prosper you and not to harm you. And I want to deal with that for a second. If you're not walking in a prosperity mind, then you're doing damage to your body. If you're not walking according to how God wants you to live, then you're doing damage to your body. And 
brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you uh, that some of us are walking around with irregular heartbeats uh, and we got cardiac arrhythmia uh, and we don't have no energy in our hearts uh, and we don't have no energy to love God uh, like we ought to love him. Uh, it's a shame when sinners uh, that tell us more about God than those that profess that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. It's a shame when sinners, uh, oh God can tell you what God did for them and don't nobody who is saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost uh, can get up and testify about the goodness of the Lord. Uh, it's a shame uh, that when the saints of God uh, don't want to come together and pray, uh, our hearts need to be back in sync with God. Uh, it's a shame uh, when the saints of God come into the house, uh, but ain't nobody glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, we need to check our heart uh, and we need to check our pulse uh, and we need to see if we're really living uh, or are we a dead walking soul. Uh, we need to check ourselves. Uh, oh God, but God uh, in this time uh, and in this season uh, is going to change our heart uh, from being hearts of stone uh, to being hearts of flesh. Uh, in other words, God uh, says I want to revive you uh, back to the right beating uh, and I want to revive you uh, right to the back syncopation of what I've been told and telling you to do. So when we look at this text, we find that the Bible is helping us to get our heart back in alignment. I'm coming. I'm getting there. When we look at the cardiac arrhythmia, it occurs again when electrical impulses in your heart don't work properly. Uh, and it's out of sync with God. Now, here are some symptoms of cardiac arrhythmia. Oh, God, the research shows that sometimes, watch this, there may be no symptoms. <laughs> or oh, you're just going through the motions, but your heart is far from it. Uh, the other symptoms may include fluttering in the chest. <laughs> you get pain in your chest, and you're fainting, and you feel dizzy. <laughs> oh, and I want to encourage you that some of us, hallelujah, have been going through the motions, and our heart is not in the right place. <laughs> and sometimes, after service, we get dizzy. And sometimes, we're in service, and we get fainted. <laughs> oh, but simply because there's a problem going on and we don't know where it's coming to coming from and a lot of us want to run to the doctor uh, and see what's going on when I feel body but the reason why our physical body is in the state that is in is because our heart is not beating the right way <laughs> oh god a lot of stuff that you're dealing with physical isn't just physical it's really spiritual and it's coming throughout through your body this is why when you deal with unforgiveness unforgiveness calls cancer unforgiveness calls bitterness and all of that stuff will be uh, manner to the bones if you will and it'll cause you to act out in all kinds of ways and you can't figure out what's going on you'd have been to every doctor and they put you on all this medication and it still ain't helping. It ain't because it's physical, it's because it's spiritual and you got to get back in alignment with God and the reason why you got high blood pressure and all of this stuff is, is because you ain't putting the right stuff in your body and now your body is out of alignment and your heart can't take it. The reason why we got heart attacks is simply because we put too, put too much in the body and the heart can't take what don't need to be in the body and if you look at it spiritually, the reason why our hearts are not in seek a patient with God is because we got too much junk on the inside of us. We're doing too many things that is not pleasing with God, but I come to tell you that God is going to give you a heart transplant. I ain't talking to everybody. I'm just talking to somebody. Oh, the results of the cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, if you experience some of these things, uh, the research says, lady, that if you are experiencing pain, fainting, and dizziness, and you got pain in your chest, uh, uh, the research says you might need some treatment. Here we go. You might need some treatments. You might need some medication. And I'm not talking about just physical. I'm talking about spiritual. And the dose that you need, ain't another singing service the, the, the dose that you need ain't another fish fry the, the, the dose that you need ain't another car wash but you need a dose of the Holy Ghost you need a dose of the Holy Spirit you need a spiritual medicine you need a spiritual aid you need a spiritual medicine ball you need a spiritual night quill you need a spiritual inflammatory you need a spiritual thing and this ain't physical but it is spiritual. I want y'all to write this down. I'm going to get into the text. A stony heart is a weak heart. A stony heart is a weak 
heart. Y'all shared this video. Invite somebody in. A stony heart is a weak heart. And when we look at the book of Ezekiel, we understand that the prophet, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just take a second right here and just begin to open our mouth and bless him? Hallelujah. God, we honor you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. And we give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when we look at this, before we get there, uh, when you need a heart transplant, uh, Minister Simon, when you need a heart transplant, watch this, you don't get a brand new heart. Uh, you don't get a brand new heart when you need a heart transplant because there's not like a heart that is brand new sitting on the shelf that they can take off the shelf and you can just buy it at the local Walmart and put it in. Uh, you, you, in order for you to have a heart transplant, watch this, you have to have a match. You have to have somebody that's got the same type of blood, same type of, it has to match. My God, I'm not, I'm not uh, speaking from trying to be a physician, uh, but you got to have a match. There's got to be a donor available. In other words, somebody got to lose their heart in order for you to get a heart. My God, oh God, and you got to lose your heart in order to get a heart. This is why it's important for us to be in syncopation with God, because if we are not in syncopation with God, when we lose, our heart my God nobody else can replace the heart that God has given us oh God except for him him alone you can't go to your mama and say mama I jacked up but I need a new heart this is why David said I create a clean heart and renew because once you get a, a transplant a transplant your heart is new because you had something different than you had before and when you have a new heart your heart can be cleansed and your spirit can be in line with it so you got to get a heart. You got to have availability in order for you to get a transplant. And God is going to change the stony heart. When we look at this text, the prophet Ezekiel, he was a Hebrew prophet. He was the one who saw uh, the, the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He was the prophet of old, amen, if you will. And he would declare the works of the Lord and he would tell the people what thus said the Lord. Uh, he was not one of those prophets that uh, prophesied houses and cars. He, he was he was one of those prophets that stood at the threshing floor of Jesus. He was one of the ones that had his ear close to the mouthpiece of Jesus and he would hear what the Lord would be saying Amen to his people. And so when we look at chapter 36, we find, oh God, that Israel, the chosen people, my God, the chosen generation, the people that God has appointed and called, the same one that was in bondage in Egypt, oh God, the same ones that he delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh, watch this, and allowed them to go through the wilderness, amen, and get to the promised land of uh, flowing with what? Milk and honey. It's these same people that God heard their cry and deliver them out of the snares of the enemy. I believe it was two million plus, if you will, that he delivered out of Egypt and put them in a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is the same people that believed God to do that. And when they got in the wilderness, he killed some of them off because they were raising up golden calves and idolatry and all of this stuff. And then he would allow them to cross over Jordan, take over territories, and get to the promised land. It's the same people that he blessed and they then will return and dismiss him and deny him and rebel against him. What is it a people that God would be so attached to and say even in the midst of your rebellion state I'm going to still love you. Isn't that amazing God that we will rebel against God. We would talk dirty about God with our acts instead of our lips and we would do all types of things that would defile the name of Jesus but his love remains the same for us amen he said he to God yesterday today and forevermore 
what kind of God do we serve? We serve a God that is faithful to his word, that his promises are yes and amen, that even when you backslide and I clip up and trip up, he's still standing there with his arms wide open saying, I know you rebelled against me and I know you turned against me and you got your, your riches and you ate it all up and you spent the money, but when you get tired, I'm going to be right here standing waiting for you to come home. We ought to celebrate God just because God is a faithful God because if we be honest about ourselves Minister Burnett that God should have killed us a long time ago if we be honest about it the stuff we were doing in the church God should have snatched us out right in the middle of it the stuff that we did in our bedrooms huh, with somebody that didn't belong in there God should have snatched us out the funerals that we presided over it should have been us in the grave ah, but God huh, may death behave somebody ought to get excited huh, that God huh, didn't take you out of your mess that God didn't let your heart stop beating when you should have been dead oh that God gave you one more chance oh that God gave you two three four five plus chances you ought to just bless him for the chance oh God no matter how many you got you ought to just say God thank you for chance in fact chance should be some of y'all middle name oh chance should be some of y'all last name chance should be some of y'all first name because if it had not been for chance you wouldn't be here somebody ought to thank God for a second chance oh God chance thank you chance thank you chance thank you chance we give you glory chance and in other words we're saying thank you for grace thank you for mercy thank you for unmerited favor thank you thank you thank you somebody ought to just tell God thank you right here in this moment thank you Jesus chance should be your middle name and so the rebellious people, oh God, the rebellious people, the people that don't get up and pray in the wee hours of the night because they're too tired and they ate too much chicken, the people that don't want to forgive, the people that's backbiting and cussing and fussing, he's talking to all of us in 2020. He's talking about all of us. My God, I, I'm coming to him. I'm coming. I'm going to help us get to this, through this, but we got to get through the rough part first. <laughs> we got to get through the stony part first. Amen. And so the Bible says that Ezekiel will prophesy the things of the Lord. Amen. And before we dig right in 36, we find that God told Ezekiel to talk to the enemies of Israel. Uh, oh God, he said, talk to the enemies of Israel. I'm paraphrasing. You go back and read it for yourself. But he said, talk to the enemies of Israel. He said, prophesy to their mountains. My God. He said, prophesy to their lands. Prophesy, watch this, to their chickens and their animals. He said, Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy to the enemies of the land of Israel. Oh God, I want you to catch this in the spirit huh, that God would tell Ezekiel to prophesy to the enemies of the Israelites. Huh. I want you to understand understand that you have the power to prophesy to your enemies. I want you to understand that you have the ability to tell your enemies to get behind me, Satan. You have the, you have the ability to tell your enemies to, to leave you alone. You have the authority to tell your enemies that God is going to do a great work inside of you in spite of what they have already said against you. Oh, yo, the Bible declares that he gave Ezekiel the power to prophesy, oh God, to his enemies. And I want you to take a second right here and I want you to prophesy to your past and tell your past to leave you alone. I want you to prophesy to your enemies and tell your enemies to take your hands off of me because you are a child of God. I want you to prophesy to every demon and witch and warlock and tell them the plan that you plotted for me is going to be the grave that you dug for yourself. Oh God, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Lord shall lift up a standard. Oh, the Bible also declares that he'll make your enemies your footstool. So this is how you have the ability to prophesy to your enemies and tell your enemies to leave me and mine alone. Oh God, and everything attached to me is already won. Everything attached to me is already winning. You ain't got no authority and you ain't got no power. I know I jacked it up, but God is going to help me make up. Oh God in here, you ought to prophesy to your devils and tell your devil I see you for what you really are and I hear you for what you sound like and tell 
tell your devil to go back to hell from which you came. Oh God, a power and authority is in the name of Jesus. And the Bible declares that at the mention of his name, demons will tremble and demons have got to flee. So use your authority. Use your power. Use your God-given right. The power that's been invested in you from the day of your mama's womb. Tell your devils to go back to hell and leave me alone. Tell your devils you can't have my anointing. Tell your devils you can't have my gifts. Tell your devils you can't have my calling because I'm on a great assignment for the Lord. Tell your devils you can't have my children. Prophesy to your devils and tell your devils you can't have my marriage. Prophesy to your devils and tell your devils my bank account will go in an overflow. Prophesy to your devils and tell your devil you can't have the church. The church don't belong to you. Tell your devils, you can't pray, you can't have my son. My son is bought with the price. Tell your devils, you can't have my job. Tell your devils, you can't have my mind. Tell your devils, you can't have my spirit. Tell your devils, you can't have my joy. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. I need you to write here in this second prophesy to your devils tell your devils tell them to leave you alone tell your devils prophesy to your devils right here take five seconds to prophesy to your devils come on prophesy to your devils we ain't got in the text prophesy prophesy to your devils come on you got five more seconds Tell your devils where they got to go. Come on, you got four more seconds. Tell your devils where they got to go. You got three more seconds. Tell your devils who you are. I don't care how jacked up you were. Tell them who you is now. You got two more seconds. Oh, tell your devils. You got one more second. Tell your devils. And now declare the victory. Now clap your hands. And now give him praise. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, give him glory. So, ain't even got to the text. But he told Ezekiel to prophesy to the enemies and tell them what thus said the Lord. Ezekiel did the will of the Father. And then that's when we get to verse 36. Ezekiel is now being commissioned by the Spirit of the Lord. Watch this. I want y'all to catch this in his spirit. Sometimes before the Lord speaks to you, I want y'all to catch this. He'll speak to your enemies. I want y'all to catch this if you will. Sometimes before the Lord gives you a report about what you're getting ready to go into and what you're getting ready to inhabit, catch this if you will, and what you're getting ready to do and what's getting ready to come your way, I want you to catch this, that before he tells you that sometimes, sometimes he'll already tell your enemies to give up what he's going to prophesy to you to go get. I need y'all to catch this. Sometimes we be looking for the devil to come after what God has spoken. But I want you to declare this over your life, uh, that the Lord has already spoken to my enemies before I walk into the next door. Hallelujah. And so that means that when you walk into this next door, watch this. I'm talking to somebody that when you walk into this next door, he's already told your enemies to behave. He's already told your enemies to leave him alone. Touch not my anointing one and do my prophets no harm. This is why some of y'all ain't catching hell on your job. You call hell going to your job. Uh, simply because the God of our salvation had to tell them to leave you alone in the place that he's already ordained for you. Oh my God in here. This is why some doors you can walk through ain't nothing, ain't nothing stopping what's coming. Doesn't mean that it ain't going to happen. But sometimes you'll walk through doors with no adversity, no hit cups no pressure no nothing that's because God has already talked to your enemies and told your enemies that in this place this person is going to demolish you because I've already given them authority over you and I spoke to you to get you to, uh, the heads up that if you bother them in the season that I'm taking you to you're going to have a hell to pay with with them oh my God in here 
And so he prophesied to his enemies. So then he gets to verse chapter 36 and he tells them, he says here, he says, now Ezekiel, son of man, son of man, I want you to prophesy to Israel's mountains. Watch this. Uh, after you have prophesied to the enemy's mountains, now I want you to prophesy to Israel's mountains. And see, the reason why God sent Ezekiel to prophesy to the nation of Israel was simply because Israel had become a disobedient nation. Israel heart had become rebellious. I, I kind of talked about a little bit. Israel heart had become rebellious. This is the same people that he allowed to walk on dry land. This is the same people that he fed in, in the wilderness. This is the same people that he gave quail uh, that fell from the sky, sky, manna fell from heaven, water came from a rock. He gave them Moses as a leader. He provided everything that they need in the wilderness. It's the same people, watch this, that have not begin to be rebellious, but they had already, they fallen back into the state of rebellion. My God, this ain't something new for the, 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 the Israelites. This ain't something new for the nation. And I want to encourage you that, uh, uh, in this next phase, don't fall back into the spirit of rebellion. Don't fall back into the spirit of disobedience. Help us in here, Holy Spirit. Uh, God is trying to get his nation together. God is trying to get his people together, even in this last quarter of the year, that God is simply saying that I'm trying to get you together because there's some things that I want to do for you. Oh, my God, in here. And so Israel didn't just start being rebellious. They had already had rebellious spirit on the inside of them, and somehow it creeped into the a new land that God had ordained for them. Isn't it like some of us, we doing the right thing and somehow something creeps up on us and we don't know where it came from. Something finds us doing the right thing and we give into something that is not the right thing and we need God to do a change of heart. We need God to do a transplant. Some of us have dealt with death in this year. Some of us have dealt with death in the last year and we still holding on to it because our heart has been broken. Family, loved ones have died. People have walked away. People have turned against us. People have talked about us. Amen. And the church doors are closed. I don't know which one I'm coming or going. Uh, my family ain't acting right. People ain't going. My money looking funny. Oh, God. And some stuff in life will cause us to be rebellious simply because we're watching this. We're not getting our way. Huh? That we're not. We're having a spiritual tension tantrum. And we're acting a monkey in the grocery stores and falling out all, all over the place because we're not getting what we want. And sometimes in the body of Christ, when we don't get what we want, we'll cut a Cut, cut a monkey and we'll cut a get a tantrum tantrum and we'll get rebellious my God and we'll have a heart that's beating irregularly and we'll start dealing with idolatry and we'll start getting hard against the spirit of God and here it is and the heart that we had went from being a strong servant heart has moved to a stony heart that has now become weak my God and it simply has become a weak heart because of irregular heartbeats and we move in car cardiac arrhythmia because we ain't got no stamina. We ain't got no life in God. And our heart washes is out of alignment with God. My God in here. And so when we look at this, Israel had become a re rebellious people again. They started doing idolatry and they started becoming hard against the move and the spirit of God and the slight breaking of the conditions of their first covenant with him. Watch this. The Lord in his grace promised to make a new covenant with his people. Oh my God in here. And how does he make a new covenant with them? Is first he realizes and he tells them what the problem is. The reason why you don't have a heart of flesh is because you have become rebellious and you are not moving in the direction of sustaining in the old covenant that we made with you but because I love you so much and because my son is going to die for you and because I care so much for you, I'm going to make a new covenant with you and the first thing that I'm going to deal with watch this, is your heart because I can't deal with your praise and I I can't deal with your worship and I can't deal with your emotionalism but I can deal with your heart and the reason why he can deal with your heart is because he gave you the heart that you got and because he gave you the heart that he got he's the only one that can operate on it you can turn to your left and talk to your friends and family oh but they can't love you like God love you you can turn and talk to your boo but they won't treat you like God do oh God in here this is why you got to have a transplant of your heart and so he says he says here in the text Ezekiel tells him he said prophesy to Israel and tell the mountains of Israel 
that I'm going to do something miraculous, my God. Now that we done got through the pre-op of the surgery, now God is operating on us. And he has put us in sedation. Watch this lady. He's put us in quarantine. He's put us where we got to stay six feet from each other. He's put us in a place where we need to stay in our house and not be traveling all over the place. He has sedated us in his care. And he's put us in a place where he's getting ready to do surgery on us. He's put us in a place where he can't be interrupted by your voice and by your talking. He can't be interrupted by your plans. He's now put us in sedation, a spiritual sedation, where God is saying, if my people would just humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, that's when I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal the land. I'm putting you in a deep sleep so I can heal you. I'm putting you in a deep place of rest so I can operate on you oh God in here and he tells Israel as they're asleep he said I'm speaking to your mountains and I'm speaking I've already talked to your enemies hallelujah and I'm speaking to your mountains and I'm telling your mountains uh, that there's going to be an increase of abundance of rain I'm telling your mountains uh, that your land is going to be plentiful I want y'all to catch the prophetic word that your land that's been desolate is getting ready to uh, produce crops in the dry land uh, oh God in here uh, Oh, God, in here, because I love you so much, and I won't let you die on the operating table. He said, my anger was against you simply because you were a rebellious people, and my strife was against you simply because you was a rejecting people. You reject my love in a time of blessing, my God. You reject my favor in a time of blessing. You reject my anointing in a time of blessing, but because I love you so much, I'm going to reverse what I said, my God. Oh, God in here. And he said, and I was same of my people. He said, but I'm going to let the prophet speak to your mountains. And I'm going to let the land come up from my word. I'm going to plant my word in your ground. And in the season of drought, while everybody else is trying to figure out how they're going to eat Popeyes, you going and getting two cases of chicken from college seeds. In the season of dryness, I'm going to make water flow from the desert. In the season of a drought, I'm going to make rain fall from manna. My God, in the season of going without, get ready because there's some doors that I've already unlocked and everybody ain't going to go in. Only but the righteous can enter and accept the inheritance of my blessings. But because, not because you deserve it, it's all because of my love. Not because you've been so good, it's been because of my love. Not because you've been so faithful, but it's been because of my love not because you look so pretty it's been because of my love not because you had some and everybody signing your day autographs against your book but because it's of my love and God says that I'm getting ready to do something miraculous for your people I'm getting ready to do it tell Ezekiel Ezekiel tell my people tell my people what I'm getting ready to do and if we move on down God to verse 26 and that's the one that we read. But before we get to verse 26, I want you to go back up. 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 Here it is. I want you to go back up to verse 22. And this is what he says Ezekiel to tell to his people. In verse 22. He says there, he says, therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. He says, watch this. I'm bringing you back. <laughs> Y'all sort of holler right there. <laughs> oh, God. He says, I'm bringing you back. My God, if you could just shout with victory right there. You ain't got to really go no further. But he told, he told Ezekiel, he said, tell my people, my God, <laughs> that I'm bringing you back. In other words, you've been out of alignment with me. <laughs> You've been out of sync with me. And you've been out of syncopation with me. He said, but I'm bringing you back. My God. He said, I'm bringing you back. He says, but not because, watch this, you deserve it. My God. Not because you deserve it. He said, I'm doing it, watch this, to protect my holy name. In which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. 
It is God is simply saying that you were scattered and you were not in alignment with me, but I'm bringing you back. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get happy about this moment right here because when you think about where you were and what you did and how you did it and who you did it with and who you did it to, you don't deserve to come back. But God is going to create a resurrection down on the inside of his people and you are dead, dried up, and your bones ain't living. But like he said, will these dry bones live? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. He said, not because of your good looks not because of your good name he said but I'm bringing you back Sonia I'm bringing you back Irwin I'm bringing you back Sonia I'm bringing you back Ronnie I'm bringing you back Jay I'm bringing you back Pastor Jay I'm bringing you back Serena I'm bringing you back VCDC I'm bringing you back watch this not because you did anything perfect but because of my holy name see you got to understand that God names carry weight and he ain't gonna let his name look a shame even though you went and got a tattoo with uh, Jesus on it uh, and Jesus on it don't mean that he gonna you gonna protect his name like he can protect his name uh, oh my god in here and then in verse 30 23 he said I will show how uh, my holy great name is uh, the name on which you brought shame among the nations uh, and when I reveal my holiness through you watch this uh, he's gonna reveal his holiness through you uh, watch this you don't deserve to carry his holiness uh, but he's going to get the glory out of you. This is why you can't throw in the towel. Because there's some glory coming out of you. This is why you can't quit. Because there's some glory coming out of you. This is why you can't stop. Because there's some glory coming out of you. This is why you got to prophesy to your devils. And tell your devils that there's glory coming out of me. So he said. He said there's some glory. That's coming out of me. And I will reveal my holiness to you before your very eyes, says the sovereign Lord. And then uh, the nations will know that I am the Lord. Uh, 24 says, for uh, I will gather you up from all nations uh, and bring you home again to your land. Uh, in other words, God said, uh, the, th the land that I gave you, uh, and even though you scattered yourself, uh, and even though you left the land that I promised you, uh, and left the land that I gave you, uh, watch this, because of my name, uh, your land will not be vacated. It would not be taken up. Hallelujah. It would not be occupied. The land that I gave you, that you forsake it, and that you left. Oh God, it's still going to be available. Watch this. The stuff that you quit on, God says it's still available. The stuff that you stopped in, God says it's still available. The stuff that you left for the, coat, the, the other people that inhabit, God says it's still going to be there. And I want you to go back to it. Because my name carries weight. Wait, huh? I want you to go back to it. The entrepreneurship, huh? go back to it. Your creative ideas, go back to it. Huh? Your way of living right, huh? go back to it. Your way of worshiping, go back to it. Your very heart huh? of praise, go back to it. The very thing huh? that kept you, that you left, huh? God says, come back to it. God says, come back to it. <laughs> You don't forsake the books you were supposed to write. God says, go back to them. Pick it up. You don't forget, uh, neglected the songs you were supposed to produce. God says, go back to them. You forgot about the people you were supposed to encourage. God says, go back to them. They're still available. Whoa, God. The things that you set up and God done blessed you with that you done gave away and that you done forgot. God says, it's still yours and your name is still on it because my name carries weight. And so we are almost there. And then he says here, at the end, uh, I'm going to bring you home again. Uh, verse 25, then I will sprinkle. This is what I'm going to do. Huh? He said, after I bring you back home, I got to cleanse you. Huh? He said, I got to clean you up. Watch this. This is why you can't wait to be clean before you come to church. This is why you can't wait to be perfect before you come to the house of prayer. This is why you can't get it all together before you come. <laughs> because if you got it all together, that means you did it and he didn't do it for you. 
<laughs> and God says, I got to wipe the blemishes from you. <laughs> oh, God, I got to get rid of this stuff that you done rolled in. Huh? I know you done bedazzled yourself with a uh, uh, Sean John cologne and you done put the makeup on your face. You done got a new wig. You got a fresh haircut and you done got bedazzled. Huh? Oh, God, with white diamonds. Amen. He said, but I got to wash you again. Huh? I got to make you clean before me. Huh? Oh, God, somebody ought to get glory right here. Huh? Somebody ought to be excited huh? that God will wash you over again. There's an old song that say wash me over again. Wash me over again. Oh, In thy precious blood. Oh God wash me over again. This is why you can't act like you got it all together. Because the truth of the matter is we need a bath every day. We need to be washed over. We need to be washed from the cares of this world. And the iniquities of our sin. We need to be washed uh, because we've been in a company of people uh, that don't mean us no good. Uh, and we smell like them. Uh, and we look like them. Uh, and we sound like them. Uh, but God said, uh, I'm bringing you back uh, to wash you over. Uh, I'm bringing you back uh, to get a fat calf so we can have a party. I'm bringing you back uh, so I can put my robe back on you. Uh, and you can be filled with my glory. Uh, and you can be filled with my anointing. I'm bringing you back. Somebody shout, he's bringing me back. He's bringing me back. He's bringing me back. Somebody in a shout. He's bringing me back. I told you to tell somebody. Oh, God, that God had a word this morning. Oh, I got a couple more minutes and then we're going to go. Oh, he said, but I'm bringing you back. In verse 25, he said, then we'll. That's when I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean again. Not by your own hands, but by my hands. Oh, you couldn't do it if you tried. There's some spots you missed when you took a shower yesterday. There were some spots you missed this morning when you took a bird bath but God says in his word that I'm going to clean you up I'm going to sprinkle water on you water from glory I'm going to give you a new heart and I'm going to sprinkle water on you from glory and I'm going to make you clean he said He said, and your filth he said your filth be, be washed away and you will no longer worship idols and you will no longer worship idols and you no longer will be rebellious and you no longer will be rebellious uh, and you no longer will be uh, disobedient. Huh? He said, but your filth huh, will be washed away huh, and you will no longer worship out our gods. Huh? And here comes verse 26. Huh? And he said, and I will, huh, not man, huh, but I will huh, give you a new heart. Huh? I will give you a brand new heart huh? and I will put, huh, oh God, a new spirit in you. Huh? In other words, huh, God said, you got a, fil a filthy heart. Huh? You had a nasty heart and you ain't got a right spirit and you ain't got a clean spirit but what is that Dominique he said after I wash you over I'm gonna give you a brand new heart and I'm gonna give you a new spirit in other words you had my spirit but because you were rebellious you let another spirit replace my spirit and now I to clean you up and take out the old spirit and put my spirit back in it and that's where the new covenant started that's when the new relationship started that he's giving his people another chance he's giving his people a fourth and fifth chance and then he says here yeah, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit on you and I will take out your old stony stubborn heart and give you a tender responsive heart I want to stop here oh God when we look at a stony heart Oh, God, it's rigid heart huh, that shows up in negative ways. Huh. The heart is cold, huh, it's set, huh, it's firm, and it does not want to change. Huh. Oh, God, huh, like souls which don't want to give up and move. Huh. Stones that don't want to go nowhere. Huh. Stone that's stuck in complacency. Stones that are okay with them not being okay. Huh. Oh, but he said the day of you being okay and thinking it is okay to not be okay in me is come to reckoning. Huh. I I'm going to give you a brand new heart uh, and you're going to change your attitude. You're going to change your mindset. You're going to change your clapping of your hands. You're going to change the way you praise. He said, but I'm going to give you a new heart. In other words, God says, I'm going to do a character change by my power. And then he says here, after I take out your stony, stubborn heart, I'm going to give you a tender, watch this, that tender means pliable. Tender means that I can cut it if I want to. That it, it, it's, it's soft to the touch. Y'all know what it is to have tender meat? 
it's soft to the touch. That before you can stick your fork in it, it already fell to the part, it fell apart. That this time that your heart gonna be so tender that but when he even just breathes on you, that you're gonna fall apart. That you're not gonna have to be able to hold it. <clears throat> Uh, I don't need you to hold my mule. I don't want to even hold it. My God, I'm going to give you a heart that's tender, that's going to be pliable. And then he said, watch this. After I give you a tender heart, watch this, it's going to be responsive. Which means that the heart that you had before it became responsive was dead. And he said, I'm going to give you a responsive heart. The heart that responds to my sound. The heart that responds to my movement. The heart that responds, watch this, to my word. The heart that responds to my voice. Uh, and a stranger, they won't obey. <laughs> the heart that listens to my voice. And a stranger, they won't obey. And then the last verse says, and I will put my spirit in you. In other words, I'm going to take out the spirit that ain't me and put the spirit that is me in you. So that you will. Follow my decrees. See, it's not enough that God would change our heart and give us a heart transplant. And But what he's going to do is he's not only going to give us a heart transplant, but why should he going to fill us with his spirit? So that way when he fills us with his spirit, he can talk to his own heart. Uh, see, when you have the heart of God, it ain't your heart that's beating. It's beating because God lives in you. And it beats because he resides in you. And so the reason why he can, uh, he can, he can give you, you can, a uh, heart that's pliable is because his spirit lives within and it can touch, it can touch his heart. He's not trying to touch your heart. He's trying to touch his heart in you. Okay. And then he said, I will put my spirit in you that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. You won't have to not obey my commandments anymore. I'm going to give you a new heart. Watch this. If we keep reading, he says that I will live in Israel. And the land I gave your ancestors long ago, you will be my people. And I will be your God. He said I will cleanse you from your filthy behavior. And I will give you good crops of grain. These are the results of the heart transplant. <laughs> I will give you the filth, your, I will get rid of your filthy behavior, and I will give you good crops of grain, and I will send no more famines in your land. Watch this. Some of the famines that you've been going through it ain't been your enemies. Some of it's been God. And I will give you great harvests from your fruit trees and fields. Watch this. And never again. Will you, the surrounding nations, be able to scuff at your land for its famines? Then you will remember your land for past sins and despise yourselves for all the tasteable things you did. But remember, says the sovereign Lord, I'm not doing this because you deserve it. He wants you to be reminded, people of God, that what he's doing to you is not because you deserve it. How he's blessing you, how he's transforming your mind, renewing your heart, giving you a heart transplant, taking the stony heart away and giving you a heart of flesh that's tender and receivable. He's not doing it. Watch this. Because you deserve it. He's doing it simply because he's doing it for his namesake. He's doing it for his namesake. Where are you today? Where are you today? God wants to do a heart transplant. He wants to change your stony heart. He wants to work on you. He wants to put you on the table of operation. And he wants to do open heart surgery on you. He wants to work on you. If you could take a second right here to lift your hands right where you are. And ask the Lord to wash you over again. 
Not because you deserve it. That's what his word was from Ezekiel. Not because you deserve it, but because my name is on it. My name is on your praise and worship gifts. My name is on your ministry. My name is on your calling. My name is on your assignment. My name is on it. You are an ambassador. You're just simply an ambassador for the kingdom. And you have two options. You can make him look good. Help us, Lord. Or you can make him look bad. But the true test of a heart of God is what we're doing in our secret time. So ask God right here to wash me over. I'm not satisfied with where I am. Wash me over. Right here, a couple of seconds, lift your hands right here and cry out to the Lord and ask God right here. Wash me over, Lord. Oh, wash me over. Put your prayer requests in so we can pray for you. If you desire prayer. see any prayer requests coming through, so we're going to pray. us over. Giving us a heart transplant. Changing our stony hearts of a rebellious people, a disobedient people. Thank you, Lord, for washing us over again. Not because we deserve it, but because your name is on it. So God, thank you for your people being changed by your word. Thank you for our life coming in alignment with your will and your way. Thank you for changing our stony heart. 
from traumatic experience, grief, unforgiveness, bitterness, whatever we may be dealing with. Oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for being God. God, we honor you, we praise you for your great name to be praised and to be adored and to be honored. We love you and praise you. Bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice. We thank you, Lord, for doing a great work in their hearts. We thank you, Lord, for doing a great work in their lives and in their families. Thank you that even you're bringing us back to the land that we are to possess, and our name is still on it. We give you glory. We give you honor. Touch the heart that's undecided right now. Those who need to rededicate their life, we thank you. Instead of lifting our emotions, we lift you high. Pray for those who are attached to us. Thank you for rededication, redirection, and alignment. We ask, Lord God, that you would be with the person that just decided to rededicate their life. Make them clean again, God, before you. Build them up, sustain them. In the name of Jesus, continue to cover our ministry. Thank you for direction. Thank you for aligning our hearts back to you. Thank you for the plans that you have towards us. God, we love you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. It's in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all say together, amen. Come on, let's lift up the Lord right here. For the rededication of a life back to Jesus. Hallelujah. If we be honest about it, a lot of us we need to read to dedicate right here. Our commitment to God, rededicate our life back to Him. Amen. As your prayer requests have come in, amen, we will continue to pray for them. Amen. Continue to stay safe. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, if you would prepare for your offering. <laughs> Amen. After we end this live, give your offering, sow your seed, be giving your tithes. Thank you for tithing unto the Lord. He honors a cheerful giver. Amen. If you are sowing your offering, thank you for giving unto the Lord. Amen. And if this word has helped you and encouraged you or challenged you in any way, sow on the word. Put in that memo on that cash app seed offering or give it by seed offering. Amen. Oh. Amen. So we thank you for your liberal giving. Amen. We thank you for your just being a support to this ministry financially and spiritually. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your encouragements. Amen. Thank you for your words of affirmation. Amen. We thank God for all of those who are partners and visitors of this ministry. We love every last one of you. Amen. Amen and amen. There's no really deep announcements or anything going on. Please look out on your emails for the victorious news or the victory news letter to see what we have going on for this month. Amen. Amen. We'll be back with you on Tuesday for Word Tuesday Bible study. Amen. We are excited to come back. Amen. Lady and I will be back on Tuesday for Word Tuesday Bible study. Amen. And we'll be continuing the series of identity. Amen. We pray that it has been a blessing. Amen. And we pray that you've enjoyed your two weeks off. Amen. But we're getting in kicking it in the last gear of the year. Amen. So join us on Tuesday nights. Amen. At seven o'clock. Amen. For Word Tuesday Bible study. Amen. We thank you on behalf of my wife and we thank you for your calls and your texts and your emails, your Facebook messages and your love 
for our anniversary. Amen. We thank God that we have made it. Amen. To go into our 14th year of marriage. So we thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen and amen. So thank you again for your love and kindness. Amen. So with nothing else being said, we've done the offering. We gave you a little bit of uh, announcements. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Amen. Uh, and go to our website for any other additional information. Amen. Um, thank God for those who are still sponsoring um, my family in the Love Hoodie Project. Amen. That is going great. Amen. So still continue to give if you desire or purchase some hoodies. I'll pick them up and come get them. Amen. We are well on our way to get those out. Amen. And they're still coming in. So we thank God for you. Amen. Hey, so if nothing else grabs our attention, amen. Jay, Jay is good to see you, brother. Jerry is working. It's good to see you, man. Love you. Amen. So right here in this moment, if you don't have nobody in your room with you, declare it over yourself and say, I'm victorious. Come on. I'm victorious. Shout with victory. I'm victorious because I'm living victoriously. Y'all have an amazing second Sunday of November. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day. It's beautiful outside. Love on somebody. Show somebody love. We love you. God bless.